If data is the new currency, the question is, how do you translate your data into dollars? Hello and welcome to this episode of Tech at Work with me, Reema Tendulkar, your host, and we're gonna be discussing data monetization. Companies are becoming increasingly aware that they're sitting on huge amounts of underutilized data. This is largely untapped, yet a lucrative revenue stream that already exists within most of the large companies, and data monetization now presents a compelling business opportunity virtually for every company. But how do you know what your data is worth? How do you convert your raw data into information and capture its potential? What are the strategies employed by companies? Mark Sullivan, the global CFO of International Data Corporation, joins in to discuss this. IDC, or International Data Corporation, is a provider of market intelligence, advisory services, and events for information technology, telecommunications, and consumer technology markets. And Mark is responsible for IDC's worldwide financial reporting, analysis, and planning. He's also a member of IDC's Senior Management Committee. Mark, thank you very much for speaking with Tech at Work. Uh, I, data is an asset, no doubt, and I guess now everyone realizes it. But have companies started the process of monetizing? How many companies are currently monetizing their data? What stage of readiness are we in now? Well, that's a good, uh, good question, and you're right. Uh, we're living in a very technical uh, digital era right now, and uh, this, this digital transformation, or DX as we call it, is really generating uh, all sorts of uh, data that did not exist before. Uh, we, IDC calls it data exhaust. Uh, and along with this, this, this DX uh, era that we're in, the uh, demand for data, the demand for uh, personalized services, for uh, advanced product sets uh, is only increasing, and then that in turn drives even uh, more data. Uh, monetization, as you mentioned, is, is going to be very important in the future. Uh, IDC is conducting research and surveys on that. Uh, but why is it important? Uh, why do companies want to care about it? Uh, one of the reasons is that if, if they don't do something today, it may be an opportunity cost, uh, they could miss out, or it could put them in a, a very com uh, disadvantageous uh, competitive situation. Uh, another reason is that uh, the, the data is there. It's being generated. Let's put it to good use and try to monetize it. And the third reason is that CIOs have dreamt forever of uh, becoming not just a cost center for their companies, but a, 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 a division or a department that can drive revenue and profits. So this is probably uh, their best opportunity in many, many years to, to realize that dream. Uh, recent survey results uh, that, that IDC uh, has from two, late 2018, where we interviewed uh, a thousand CXOs from uh, large enterprise corporations in Asia. A uh, large enterprise is uh, a company that has a thousand or more employees. Uh, the results of that survey uh, indicate that by 2020, 60% uh, of those enterprises uh, will have created da data management or data monetization programs, and that uh, by 2021, uh, on average, those companies expect 22% of their revenue to come from data, where it doesn't come from data today. Okay, so those are some very important insights. So by 2020, your survey tells you that 60% of the enterprises will actually create data uh, monetization capabilities. And in the following year, in, by 2021, 22% of the revenues of these companies could come in from data monetization. But how can you monetize your data? What are the strategies employed by companies? Well, the, as I mentioned earlier, the CIO will probably be the, the, the key person, but there are also uh, uh, data managers, data experts, and line of business managers who will also be key players in this, in this phenomenon. Uh, I think before th there's some magic wand waved and, and revenue is suddenly being generated by data, uh, the companies have to look very carefully at what data they have and what is the value. And is the, is the monetization going to be uh, through exchange? or actual sale, or some sort of other barter arrangement? And will it be just raw data, strictly uh, just data picked up with no enhancements? Or will it be, in fact, enhanced with uh, value-added data fields or segmentation added, for instance? Uh, in our industry, the market research business, uh, for years, retailers have given away what we used to call register tapes or sales out data in exchange for, and that was raw data, and that data would be exchanged for uh, the aggregated result from many, many retailers uh, delivered back to them so they could determine market share, uh, pricing, and volume. So the, the monetization of data is not necessarily a brand new phenomenon, but I think 
uh, more and more companies will be looking to um, uh, capitalize on the data they generate. Uh, there's a, a bit of a continuum between you know, raw data, as I mentioned, for like the sales out data, uh, all the way to more enhanced data. Uh, the telecommunication companies are one of the first adopters to monetizing their data. And they are very, very good even today at adding uh, the demographic data, um, gender data, location data to the, the information that they're able to collect over their, their cell networks. Mm. Fair enough. Telcos actually have the most data that they can monetize today. They've got high quality data. They've got real time location data. Uh, so they can really get into alliances and monetize their data. Which other industry are you seeing a high potential of using big data? Which companies and industries can monetize? Well, it's, uh, I've got a couple of case studies here, some, some good examples. Uh, GM, for instance, has uh, 15 million uh, connected cars uh, in pretty much in the U.S. Uh, through their OnStar program, and they're just beginning to monetize that. And some of the some of the uses are with insurance companies because uh, they they have good access to driving habits of drivers. Uh, uh, companies who want to make special offers around automobile services, and uh, and and any other high end. Uh, uh, for instance, radio advertising, they, uh, through this OnStar program, GM can collect data on does the driver listen to the radio and how often do they listen to the radio and are they, uh, they can test uh, if they've heard an ad for a, a coffee shop, uh, do they within an hour or something you know, uh, drive into that shop and, and make a purchase. Uh, another example is uh, Schindler, the elevator company. Uh, they collect uh, real-time uh, data on their escalators, for instance, around the world, and they're turning that into a, a service that they can sell an enhanced uh, SLA or service level agreement to their customers where they will promise the customer that they will come and repair the elevator uh, before or just as it, as it fails, uh, and that's much faster. You know, they can fix an escalator within two or three hours rather than two or three days. So that's a very valuable uh, uh, service that they can sell to customers. So that's two examples of companies outside of the telecom industry. Let me get back to the previous point where you said that there are three primary parts of monetizing your data. One, you can sell it. That we can understand. So just taking the example of, say, you know, General Motors as well as insurance, you can sell that data to an insurance company. But how do you, can you share some examples on how you can actually monetize data using the GM example, um, say, by bundling it with other services or exchanging it for premiums and discounts? How does that exactly work? Well, I think I would go to the, the uh, back to the example of the raw data that our uh, our industry uses for uh, sales out data. So that's an example of, of data that really has no value to the company uh, that generates it until it's enhanced by being aggregated with other uh, retailers, and then it suddenly has great value because it's it's very um, they can use it for determining pricing and uh, discounts and uh, other, other, you know, the determined sh uh, shelf space uh, on the retail operations. Okay, and when it comes to telcos, um, how have they monetized their data so far the best? Have they tied up with, say, retail companies, gotten into an alliance with them to tell them that, you know, when this customer or when this client actually enters into the shopping district, let's send them a voucher and try and, you know, get them to enter into the retail store if they are in the vicinity. Uh, tell us how telcos are monetizing their data currently right now. Yeah, so that last example you gave uh, is, is uh, actually real-time data, and that's, uh, that's happening, but it's not happening as, as much as other, other types of data monetization. Uh, Telefonica, for instance, uh, created a whole new brand called Luca. Uh, Telefonica sorry, is the uh, Spanish telecom, and uh, they've had rapid revenue growth, and they're targeting the retail industry, uh, very similar to what you, you, you brought up earlier, uh, just not in real time, but they are collecting uh, traffic patterns, uh, where people are walking, where they're driving, how long they're spending uh, uh, at a certain site, and they're able to sell that to uh, retailers and also real estate developers, you know, to figure out where to best build or locate uh, new retail areas. Um, another example is uh, Vodafone. They're also uh, doing very similar things to Telefonica where they're collecting uh, the data on uh, traffic patterns and um, where people are, and they are connecting that with um, 
uh, data on gender and age and even um, uh, it's like income levels and, and where, they're, uh, where they're spending uh, levels may be based on where they live. Uh, so there, there are some examples of um, two, tel uh, two telephone companies combining multiple points of data to enhance and, and sell their, their data. Okay, just one final question. How do you monetize data while respecting the privacy of individuals? Well, I know in the telecom industry, they, um, they're not allowed to market or sell anything that can be uh, identified. So the data is uh, very anonymous, and I think that's only at the device level. So there's, a, there's an identifier for the device, but it has no home address or name or anything specific about it. Uh, personal information is something that has to be uh, watched very closely, of course. Different countries have different rules. Um, Europe, the European Union, of course, has the uh, GDPR. Um, the idea, I think, is not to target individuals um, so much with advertising or to track individuals, but to um, derive uh, greater patterns and, um, and determine where best to meet the crowds or where to drive the crowds or where the crowds are going to be uh, using you know, predictive analysis and, and big data. Mark, thank you very much for your time and speaking uh, to Tech at Work with CNBCTV18.com. Uh, thank you, Rima. My pleasure. Interesting conversation there with Marx. The data monetization opportunity is a real one, and the conditions for data monetization are ripe. Massive volumes of structured and unstructured data, improving intelligence by applying data analytics, decreasing storage costs. As IDC points, 60% of the enterprises by 2020 are likely to formulate their data monetization strategy, and by 2021, nearly 22% of the revenues will come in from this source. It not only improves the competitiveness of the company, but it also gives them an added revenue source. But the only question is compliance, privacy, securities, will that limit the way in which data can be used? Uh, that only time will tell.